It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Coming up, another edition of the NFL International Series, and it should be a good one between the Atlanta Falcons and the Dallas Cowboys. Fielded near the back of the end zone, and this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. Well, the Falcon offense ready to go here, and last season for them, Charles, a 7-9 and nine finish. And not too many talking about the Falcons in the lead-up to 2020. Certainly all the focus in the NFC South has gone to Tampa Bay and New Orleans. And could this team, will they surprise folks and jump into contention for the division title? They certainly believe so, and they thought they should have been in contention the last couple of seasons. Remember, they went 6-2 and two over the last half of last season, so they thought they were starting to figure things out, and now they have Acquired Todd Gurley to help run the football, but defensively, they've got to get a pass rush. Just 28 sacks last year, second fewest in the league. Big Beasley's now in Tennessee. They need Tack McKinley to rush the passer, and can they get the big output out of Dante Fowler, who they acquired this offseason? Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. And unable to get downhill there, so he'll take this up to about the 37. But Tyrone Crawford in on the tackle. Brings up well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left in no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. This pass into the hands of the running back, Todd Gurley. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. bringing an extra defensive back from the shotgun Ryan it's caught Jones and he's going to have another first down here as the tackles made at the Cowboys 37 nice third down conversion and even 20 yards he had to figure they'd try and get the ball to Julio early, and they did it right there. And it doesn't take a degree from MIT to know that, so you had to figure, what's up with the defense? You should know that that's coming right away. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. Open receiver, that's Hayden Hurst, the tight end. A gain of six there on first. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. The confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're Ryan hit, and he lost the football. But the Falcons were able to recover, so they will keep possession. Points one, two, and three in their defensive game plan was to get to the quarterback and knock the ball free. They did it there. Luckily, offense hangs on to it. Yeah, that's got to serve as a wake-up call, though, because they can't afford to let the ball go over to the defense and miss opportunities. And I'm not saying it happened here, but you know what a good rule of thumb is when a play like that occurs? You know who usually recovers it? The guy who missed his block and let his quarterback get hit. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Second time in this game, Charles, the ball is squirted out from his hands. Luckily, his teammate was there to pounce on him. You're right. Got the lucky bounce, able to retain possession. You know, we often talk about the combine and why do we measure quarterbacks' hands. Is that really a big deal? It's for situations like this. Do you have the hands big enough and strong enough to hold on to the football while being jostled? And the punt team on now as this one sent away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. And the Cowboys offense going to work, coming off a disappointing 2019 season. 8-8 eight and eight the final record, no playoff berth, and no shortage of offseason storylines either, starting with Jason Garrett out and Mike McCarthy in. Yeah, that was one way to eliminate the gloom of everything you talked about, how they finished the season with a chance to go to the playoffs and don't get in. 
But when you change your head coach, it brings in that optimism. Now remember, this is a franchise gone 24 years since their last NFC Championship game appearance. So Mike McCarthy understands his mission, and it's to win championships, and he won a Super Bowl in Green Bay. And Charles, there, there are certain franchises where it's get to the playoffs, win big or bust. And you mentioned that number with Dallas, how long it's been. But this still feels like it's that franchise, right? They need to win, or their fans aren't satisfied. Their fans aren't satisfied. People around the league expect them to contend for a Super Bowl each and every year. The big thing for them now, Dak Prescott, he got signed on the franchise tag, so he'll be their quarterback. But will the defense rise up? Because remember, they lost Robert Quinn, Byron Jones, Gerald McCoy went down in training camp with an injury. So they really need Mr. Tank Lawrence to come to the front. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, but someone's going to run for some big yardage. Eight yards on the pickup. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Second and a couple. Prescott. Pass incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. They'll try and run for it with Elliott. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. If you make the stop there, maybe you hold him to three on this opening drive. They didn't get the stop. Yeah, a new set of downs now. Now you're worried about, just as you pointed out, not just giving up three, possibly giving up six. Let's see what they decide to do here because they've got to change up what they have been doing. It hasn't been working. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. The rookie, C.D. Lamb, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Prescott now. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Blake Jarwin, the intended receiver, and it's third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range, so now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. On third down, it's Prescott. Open man lamb, it's complete. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. They're piecing together a nice drive to start this one. Seems pretty scripted and pretty successful so far. And I think they did it without our help. Because you remember when we sat in with the, in the production meeting with them to talk about this, and hey, you know, you guys going to come out of the gate. I know I offered my help with a few plays, and they didn't seem I, to I want it. You, know, you, were, you were the smart one. Whatever they're doing, though, it's working really well. It's so often you hear that pep talks don't really work in the heat of the battle, but collectively, this defense has to say to each other, we've been on our heels this whole first drive. This is where we need to dig in. And they got a nice stop right there for a loss on first and goal. They'll try again with Elliott. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. The quick slant caught. And he 
he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. They wind up with six on the hook up there, but it's not enough. Fourth and goal. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of the first down. Well, after marching down the field, only getting three there, it kind of feels like a win for the defense. And it does. They'll go to the sideline feeling a lot better that they didn't give up a touchdown after the march against them. But if I were the offense, I wouldn't hang my head over that one. That's a good drive, and three points were put on the board. After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. Taken about seven yards deep. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons' offense. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Dontari Poe in on the stop. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Now this one into the hands of the tight end, Hayden Hurst. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. The starting drive number two off on the right foot. Completion for the first down. Drive one, is the, that had to be pretty frustrating because they moved the football. They just didn't get any points out of it. But warm up QB two, let's bring in the backup. I mean, my goodness, you take him down, you don't score points. You know I'm being totally facetious here, right? I'm just kidding. Nice first drive. Rarely do teams score on every single drive in a game, but they like what they did there. They just hope they can pay it off this time with some points. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gain five yards on it, and to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. No gain on the play. A quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. And that one's complete to Gurley. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here, just a little slow. It, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it, any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so and whether it's the script whether it's you know just what they're going through whether it's seeing different defenses they're gonna have to figure it out as this game moves on second drive forthcoming here for the dallas cowboys they've got a three nothing lead and the football as they start first and ten Start on the ground with Elliott. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football. But that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. 
Second down and 12 at the 19-yard line. Prescott from the gun. Connects here with a tight end, Blake Jarwin. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. That's Let's not quibble seven. about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Five men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. Out of the gun. Here's Prescott. He'll find Lamb. That's complete. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. Good. Prescott and Lamb hooking up for the Cowboy first. First and 10 at the 33-yard line. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. Cowboys three, Falcons nothing. Prescott looks to throw on first, and that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. Oh, it was hit at the line of scrimmage and intercepted. Picked up by Keanu Neal. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. Intercepted. The Falcons take over first and 10. On first down, it's Gurley. And a pretty good run there as he gets seven down to the 33. For 21 top Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Now Ryan. Dumps it off to Gurley. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. Jones has it. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Catch there by Julio Jones. And let's face it, we're almost running out of ways to say he's great. So let's put it into this context. Third among active players in receiving yards, starting 2020, just 852 yards behind tight end Jason Witten. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Four yards on the play. That's going to lead to first and goal. Well, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. From the gun, it's Ryan. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. Second and six. No, scratch that. Second and seven. From the gun, Ryan. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. Hayden Hurst there to make the grab. And the Falcons have taken the lead. And it was a tight window. He knew he had to rocket that thing in there. He got it done. And when you're able to complete one like that, your confidence has to just go sky high. You just mentioned a tight window. Zings it in there despite excellent coverage. Result, touchdown. Two able to connect on the extra point, and that makes it a 7-3 lead.
Right. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kicks away. Taken about seven yards deep. Pollard elects to keep it, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. The Dallas offense back out onto the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about turnovers, right? Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. And somehow he circumvents that first man and makes something out of nothing there for a gain of a couple. He was tackled at the 27 Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts, being able to diagnose run or pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Now a throw left sideline here is complete. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. A gain of four brings up third and four. The Cowboys on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This is third and four. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. Pulled in at the 24. It's a 42-yard punt. They keep him to just a yard on the return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. The Falcons offense set to go. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Now a quick throw as that's complete on the hitch round. Give him eight on the play, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Ryan now to throw on third down. Oh, they would have gotten the conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. Incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Here's Sterling Hoffrichter now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Fielded just inside the 20. Just a net of 34 there following a punt of 44 yards. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three-point CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones not having balls go through goalposts. Michael Gallup, that's who he was looking for, but it'll be second down. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. A give to Elliott. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. 
I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The Cowboys on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and four. Now Prescott. Flush to his right. He can run for it, and he will. Eight yards that time, able to take off, and the result is a first down. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy, make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play, a perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. Prescott to throw it. Got his man there, complete to Gallup. Three yards the game there, second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Second and seven. Draw play, Elliott, and some room to work. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 11 yards there, first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So after a good run by Zeke, another first and 10. Now a handoff looking right. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. One yard game. Hey, if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. On second down now. It's Elliott, and he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. Third down and nine. Prescott. Now that's Elliott, complete. And he gets this only to the 41, not near enough for the first. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked down and placed it any better than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. Now Ryan back into his end zone. It's complete to Laquan Treadwell. And they'll mark him down right around the nine, just shy of the ten. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. and He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that. And that's what he did. On the handoff, it's Gurley. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. The ball carrier. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure you're back. You spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. From the 28, it's second and five. To throw is Ryan. Caught by Jones. 
And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 15 yards on the play, first down. 10 at the 42-yard line. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. From the shotgun, Ryan. That's caught over the middle by Hurst. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. The intended target was Calvin Ridley. And that'll bring up second down. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. So second down and ten. Once again, they'll go for the 40. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Todd Gurley. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Ryan will throw again. Oh, it's intercepted. He was trying to get it to Ridley. Picked off by Jordan Lewis. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Eluding the pressure right. He'll run it. He's got a first down and then some at midfield. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. First on that play, as you saw the route start to develop downfield, I got the sense that maybe the run would set up for him. And he took full advantage of it and got a big gain on a busted play. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Now the Cowboys are going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Second and 16. Looking to throw. Prescott. He's got a man complete. It's Amari Cooper. The Cowboys going to use their second timeout now as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Third and 11. And some extra depth to the secondary here. They're in the dime. Here's Prescott. Dancing to his left. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier in this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you have something about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. He's going to find Gallup here complete. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. The Cowboys signal for their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Ball sits on the 10, second and five. Throwing, 
Prescott. Being chased out left. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. Brings up third down. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top. As it's time now to send you back stateside to Orlando, Florida and check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, as they say here in London, all to play for as we are back underway in the second half. Pollard elects to keep it and this will come out to the 25-yard line. So Prescott of the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll drop to throw. Looking for Cooper, that's complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Two catches in the first half, now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. It's funny, when I go back to our pregame meeting with Amari Cooper, and we mentioned, eh, what if they play man coverage against you? He almost seemed offended by it, didn't he? I'll beat it, that's basically <laughs> what it said, right? I mean, the best receivers we've ever talked to and covered, when you talk about covering them with one guy, they think that's a personal affront. If they feel like if they can't just beat one defender, then they're not very good. Now he's able to break through one tackle, but it slowed him down enough that he could only manage getting back to the line of scrimmage. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. Prescott gets this to the tight end, Jarwin. Prescott's pass. Completes. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6'5", and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. On third down, Elliott. And Elliott trying to work his way forward, but it looks like he did not make it. They'll be marked inches short. No gain on the play, and that's going to lead him to fourth down. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on to kick it away. And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked down and placed it any better than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Taken down. That is they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. A gain of two that play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. From the gun on third down, Ryan. And the Cowboys' pressure gets there this time for the sack. Demarcus Lawrence, his second sack of the night. And that's the second sack of the game, but this player, disruptive in all phases, whether he's going upfield, coming underneath, you name it. He's a big-time guy you have to block. The Falcons send out their punter as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. 46 on his first kick, this one in that neighborhood as well. It's a four-yard return following a punt of 49. And possession will switch hands first and 10. The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. And with the way this offense has played thus far, to be frank, they got to feel pretty grateful to be in the ball game. I would agree with you totally because they've done all of nothing offensively in this game, yet they still find themselves in a position on this drive 
where a touchdown can give them the lead. They need to take advantage of it. And they're still looking for that first touchdown here in the third quarter. All they have so far, the field goal. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside, and so many times defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. The run by Elliott, a good one on first down as he's able to pick up about six there. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them? And do I have enough confidence to make a play? From the 35, back to work on second and four. And his throw here is incomplete. Amari Cooper, his intended receiver, and it's third down. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target. But he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Prescott from the gun. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off by Darquez Denard. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Now a handoff for Gurley. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. And here's a run there by Todd Gurley. We all know he's looking to rebound from the least productive season of his career. And I think Atlanta presents him a great opportunity to do just that. They'll use him really well running it as well as catching it out of the backfield. On first down, Ryan his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended receiver was Laquan Treadwell, and that'll bring up second down. They always say that real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. you got to be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there, threw it behind him. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. The throw over the middle, taken in. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Now it's Gurley. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. There'll be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. From midfield now, here's Ryan. He's going to have the hook up to Gage. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. 15 yards on the play, first down. How about a guy proving his worth in different ways? Had the big play in the run game to play before. This time, they go right back to him in the passing game, and he comes through with yet another big play. That's why you work out so hard in the offseason, so you can stay on the field and accumulate big plays. Gurley. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Cowboys 26 yard line. The previous run good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Another carry now for Gurley. And he's got this pretty close to a first down at the Cowboys' 20-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. 
And there's a catch by Todd Gurley, and that has to remind us that's exactly what we've seen in him throughout his career when he's at his best. He can run it. He can catch it. He led the league in total yards from scrimmage in 2017 with nearly 3,000. Todd Gurley, when he's on point, is quite a weapon for the Atlanta Falcons. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Leighton call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Six yards left on second down. Now they'll throw it with Ryan. This complete to Jones. And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? And that was a heck of a play there on the outside. Partner, sometimes I think on a play like this as a corner, you've got to think to yourself, all I've got to do is slow him down so others can come over and support. But in this case, he said, forget that. I've got this. Sorry you had to make the run for nothing, fellas. This will be caught at about the five. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. From 17 yards out. And the Falcons will add on to their lead. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give him a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. Touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Taken in the end zone. Pollard elects to keep it, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. They trail now 14-3, an 11-point deficit as they start things out with a first and 10. start the drive with Elliott and he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He'll lose a yard there and it's second and 11. But these guys got to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage will be found. Ball at the 24 and a second and 11. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. Throw right side, taken in by Gallup. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 11 yards there, first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Another carry tonight for the workhorse, Elliott. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feel pretty good about your next couple of calls. From the 40 now on second down. Prescott able to hit his target, Lamb. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. C.D. Lamb was my favorite receiver in this year's draft, and it's still hard for me to believe that he lasted till the 17th pick of the first round. No one took him before that, and Dallas, surprisingly, 
finds him available, takes him, and you see why. Great hands, great route running. This guy is Mr. Excitement. Welcome back now here in London. It's the Cowboys in possession of the football, but they trail here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. First and ten, Prescott, and he'll hit the slant route. That's caught by Cooper, and he's taken down inside the 30. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. That's another Cowboys first down. First and 10 at the 15-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. A first down carry by Elliott. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Foyasade Aluakon made the tackle there from his safety position. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. To throw on second and six, Prescott. And his throw is incomplete. C.D. Lamb is intended target, and it's third down. Charles, I think back to your earlier statement about the visitors being the underdogs needing to win that turnover battle, and this defense, they forced two turnovers so far, a big reason why they lead this game. Yeah, and I know defense has always talked about getting turnovers in bunches, getting those takeaways. Two's not a bunch, but it's plenty in this game, exactly the formula they need. I gotta tell you, partner, I like it when you think back to something I said. It actually comes true. It's actually right. It happens more often than you might think. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. A 28-yard attempt. Zerline's kick is up and through. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14 to 6 now. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. That he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago. So they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and 10. Ryan will bring the Falcons up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He gives to Gurley. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Second and six. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. From the gun, it's Ryan. A slant to Jones. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A gain of 13. It's a first down. I really don't think that Julio Jones could be happier right now. Plenty of catch opportunities in this game. He's converted them, and 
his team's winning. And Matt Ryan's happy, too, to have Julio Jones on the other side of these. Yeah, you know, a lot of times we talk about breaking teams down, and oftentimes it's through a running game. These two, they can break a team down through the air. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. On first and ten, it's Ryan. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Atlanta. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. So from the 36 now, first and 10. He had another carry here tonight for Gurley. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. And he's got this pretty close to a first down at the Cowboys 17. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they turn to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Here comes a 20th carry for Gurley. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. Well, no doubt here in the fourth quarter, this is a huge defensive series. Hey, they can read the scoreboard. They realize if they give up a field goal here, this game might be out of reach. They understand the stakes and are playing accordingly. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Here's Gurley. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Well, partner, Marvin, our number one stats guy, just handed me a little card that says he has 97 yards on the ground today. You think he's going to get the ball again? I think so. Three away from that century mark. Got to have it. Yeah, and I think what they're going to call is one of his favorite runs, whatever he feels comfortable with, and what the offensive line has executed well today to try and get him over 100 yards. This is caught. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Could just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Jordan Lewis right there on the coverage. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Another shot from the one on second and goal. They'll try and push it in with Gurley. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. That gives him 98 yards in this game, and he's got to feel pretty good about that, but the entire offense does. The big thing, though, Brandon, they've got to get to 100, though. You think he knows he's at 98? I think someone has told him by now, and here's the thing. Getting to 100 or more is tangible evidence that you've had a nice day running the football. And that's what his offensive line wants for him and for themselves. Oh, it's a touchdown if he holds on. Instead, it's fourth down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one close quickly and helped force the incompletion. Here we go. A big play in a tight game late. They're going on fourth and goal. 
They'll run with Smith. And he will take it in for a fucking touchdown. touchdown. Keith Smith taking it in. And the Falcons will extend their lead. And I guess that's where you turn on fourth and goal to your muscle back there. Hand him the football. He does your dirty work. I think you're asking a lot of your defense there, right? Having to make the stand, have to prepare for just about any type of play to be called. And then here comes the power right at you. And that play, the big man got into the end zone. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And the lead is up to 15 now. Touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. This is Tony Pollard. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. So out come the Cowboys now as their offense gets set to take over. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Amari Cooper, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. Here's second and ten. Out of the gun. Here's Prescott. Got his man there complete to Gallup. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Now Prescott got an open man, the tight end Jarwin. Three yards the game there, second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. That first down completion only netted them three. Second and seven. They'll throw again. Prescott going right side here, and that's complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 31-yard line. A gain of 13. It's a first down. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Ezekiel Elliott, and it's second down. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. Prescott yet again. That one complete, Elliott. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really on to something there. In this passing game, it just can't get off the ground. In that play, it wound up losing yardage. Third and long for Prescott. Able to push his way through. And that is incomplete. The one with the dive look that time on defense just flooded the field with defensive bats, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. All right, 
They're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Desperation time. Prescott on fourth. Looking deep in the direction of Cooper. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. The Falcons take over first and ten at their own eight-yard line. They'll try and chew some clock with Gurley. And a short pickup here as he'll get across the 10 to the 11-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. A gain of two brings up second and eight. Second and eight coming up. Again, they run with Gurley. And he'll get this one up to about his 14. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. It's caught, Jones. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. It's looking good as they come up first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. The Cowboys signal for their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. with his second and four. They'll stick to the ground game with Gurley. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. On first down, it's Gurley. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. It happened in the NFL. The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. So time runs out. It's a victory for the Atlanta Falcons. And it was their defense that led the way, allowing just three points, that lone field goal in the entire second half. And remember the old adage, offense sells tickets. Defense does what? Wins championships. And in this game, maybe a championship wasn't won, but a game was by the defense, right? Held them to just a field goal. That's a heck of a job. I mean, when they went out there with that determination and a pretty good game plan. Pretty good idea of what they wanted to accomplish. Just love the execution, love the tenacity, love the way they finished.
So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. So long, everybody.